Hey folks, this is Terry. This is our uh, Proto School community call for the week of December. It's December 5th, and we have a few updates for you today on stuff we've been plugging away at, and as usual, plenty of time to answer questions. Um, so, let's see what we have for you today. So, on the content front, we have our kind of four, four fronts in the Proto School effort. So, in terms of developing content, there are a couple of things that we've done recently. Um, one is that I went through and updated resources pages to add some of the content from IPFS camp, in particular that session on understanding how IPFS deals with files that was hosted by Alan and Michael. Um, so you'll see a lot of the resources pages where it's relevant, have links out to that one now. And we will in the future be adding some of that content into Proto School lessons or new tutorials, but for now just kind of reaching out and getting, getting out to the content in the format that exists. Um, and then Jill and I are both working on going through a lot of the other content from IPFS camp to create a plan for how we can be using it. So my hope is that in Q1 we'll be able to add a couple of new tutorials or add images or interesting descriptions to existing tutorials where maybe a lesson could be more clear. Um, so there, there are a lot of ways that we can see using that content and we'll uh, be working that on that as we move forward. And also if anybody missed our last meeting last month, right before it, Jill published that new tutorial on the um, the files API, not the mutable file system, but the rest of the kind of top level commands for dealing with files in IPFS. So that is out there uh, from about a month ago if anybody wants to take a look at that one. Great new content for anybody who's leading chapters to share. And then we have a few things that are more on sort of the user experience feature side, some under the hood work. So one thing that also relates to IPFS camp content is that in that session on understanding files, Alan Shaw shared a tool called the CID inspector, which people can find at cid.ipfs.io, where you paste in a CID and it kind of breaks down um, how it's made up, like the the multi-hash and all the different parts and what version it is and all of that stuff. Um, so it's a really cool tool. And the thing that we changed in Proto School previously, if you did a code exercise and the result was a CID, there was a way to click and see that CID, see those contents in um, the IPLD Explorer. And now you'll find both a link to the IPLD Explorer and a link to the CID inspector. So it will take that CID that was the result and open it up there and kind of dig into the anatomy of that CID and what it all means. So that's a cool just little tweak across the whole site that you'll see now if you go back to any of the existing lessons and you'll see that moving forward as well. Um, and then Jill has been spending a lot of time under the hood lately fixing validation stuff. So this next one on our list is uh, fixing a timeout issue. So Dan Shields of our Denver chapter caught an issue where things were just completely hanging. Um, and Jill figured out where to set, figured out why that was happening, um, which was that the if a CID was not available on IPFS, whether it had never been there or just wasn't being shared by anyone right now. Um, so he used a timeout to make it so that that won't hang and will give a really useful error message. Um, I created a new issue template for reporting validation errors, which goes in with this whole effort of making feedback more useful. Um, and Jill, do you want to talk a little bit about Alex's PR and the work that you've been doing on that one, which is also related to error handling? Sure. So we had a, another error that has been taking some of our time uh, under the hood. Um, so basically, uh, just trying to find the issue again so I don't say anything incorrect. Uh, we had some implementation changes on how the validation is being done and how the 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 creator of the the tutorial if he has to if they have to actually do the error handling or not and so at this stage on the the PR that we have 
still hasn't been merged, but in the future, um, the way that uh, the validation will be done is that um, the creator of the tutorial won't have to specifically handle the, the errors that could come from the, the user code. So that's already handled from the from the um, from the proto school code part of the thing. Can we, I'm on yeah. mute. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of meta error stuff, errors in how we handle errors that we're <laughs> we're dealing with now. And the main goal is to really provide more meaningful feedback to people, prevent them from getting into this kind of hung state in the middle of validating their code, um, kind of distinguish between different types of errors as we go. Um, so we have a few, like this, the PR that Alex um, Pot CDs put in, which Jill has been tweaking a bit, is just about ready to go. We're just waiting for one last look from Alex and then we'll be pushing that, but it won't be noticeable to the user unless they have a good experience with an error that they would have had a bad experience with previously. Um, and then we have a few other tweaks that we'll be doing as we move forward just to make it a little bit easier to automatically, like if you hit a validation error, it's really helpful for us to know what code you put in that we failed to plan ahead for that case that you could have made that specific mistake. So making it easier to just pass along the code that someone has filled in in their browser and magically pop it into an issue. There are things like that that we have in our issue queue that would be little tweaks that we'd hope to make moving forward. Um, so one of our users who came to offline camp found and fixed a problem that is embarrassing that we missed, which is that there's a entire lesson, the last lesson in MFS was set up wrong in the router. It had a wrong number in it. So the, the lesson has been skipping from, it's not noticeable if you click like, if you just click next to get places, but it's going through lesson 10 and then skipping to the resources page because it didn't know that lesson 11 existed. Um, and if you went to the URL that should be less than 11, it wouldn't be there. So we have fixed that. <laughs> Thank you to John for that fix. Um, and then do you want to chat a little bit about the audit that you're working on, Jill? I know it's not quite done, but just a quick, a quick recap of what you're attempting to do. Yeah, sure. So basically the goal of this endeavor is to see if there's any platform that's, uh, a good fit for the content we have on Pro School, and it would allow us to migrate the content to that platform, and we wouldn't be working as much on the the quality of the platform where the content is hosted, and we could dedicate more time on the content development itself. Uh, from what I've been looking at, uh, we haven't yet found any potential candidates for that uh, there seems to be a lack of open source uh, options for uh, building tutorials and live coding exercises uh, it's also a, a difficult keyword to search because every time that i search i end up going to the most popular uh, learning platforms like uh, edx and uh, code academy and stuff like that so we're still Spending some more time with that, uh, but eventually we'll have to to decide on either keep going with the platform that we already have or migrate to another one. Yeah, and our goal is to try to wrap that up, wrap that research up this week, unless we hit on something that looks like super promising, in which case we can dedicate more time. But the ability to have IPFS validation under the hood and to be able to embed whatever that tool is in our own site is, are, those things are both really important to us um, and to be able to keep doing in-browser exercises. So um, we shall see, we'll have an update at our next meeting about where we landed on that, but that's something that we certainly plan to wrap up the, the investigation this quarter, the audit this quarter. Um, so I think that's, mostly what we have on kind of that learner experience, kind of UX, under the hood, making things work well. Um, on the community side, there are a couple of updates that are relevant to chapter leaders, which are kind of things in progress. We're continuing to work on them, but there's some great progress already made. 
So if you go now to our, actually, I will open this up and share it. Um, so this is the resources in the organizing repo and then the resources document. We now have this section on presentation materials and digital assets. So what the goal is here, um, a lot of the people who are leading proto school chapters are doing a great job of using our tutorial content live, which is which is exactly the idea. That's what we want them to be doing. But we recognize that we don't have a ton of content yet. And there's other stuff that they could be teaching about IPFS or libp2p or other related technologies. And some of them would like to present some content in different formats, whether that's someone who's leading a proto school group or someone who's leading an IPFS meetup or whatever the case may be. Um, so what I've been trying to do is encourage the teams on specific projects like IPFS to make available some materials like introductory slide decks about their projects that people are comfortable having shared and adapted. So for example, if you're on this page on Proto School, you can jump over to this is the IPFS community website and there's a section there now on IPFS event materials. Um, so for example, there's a, a slide deck on how IPFS works um, with a recording. So you could use that slide deck and adapt it for a talk that you're giving, but have a recording so you could see Stephen Allen, who did the first version of it, present it and kind of get comfortable with the material yourself if you were a chapter leader. And we'll be continuing to update these things. The reason that we're keeping them on each of these sites is to make sure that they're available to people who don't know about Proto School but are excited about the IPFS community, for example. So having kind of a central point of truth for each of these projects and then kind of pointing to them from the Proto School repo. So just trying to get things in, um, in different formats. And one second, let me find my way back to my notes somewhere. I'm trapped in full screen on my browser, so I am no longer able to access anything. Um, yeah, I... Can you tell me what's next in the call notes, Joe? I forgot I was muted. Uh, yeah, after the community growth, we have project management, but we don't have any anything. Oh, sorry. There's what there's more stuff in the community growth section. So I think oh, okay, the other okay. thing that I wanted to mention is that we have an outstanding issue. Um, there's there are other resources that we're hoping to create for chapter leaders or people teaching IPFS or whatever more generally. One of them is that we're trying to create just a template, um, a proto school template slide deck that you could use to create slides for your proto school meetups. We have a version right now, but the color contrast isn't great. So we're doing some work to improve the accessibility of that uh, before we share it. But we hope to have um, sort of a, a default generic proto school slide deck that people can use and adapt available soon. And then the other request I'm trying to check in with um, Dan, Kevin, Stefan, who led the session um, on leading chapters and leading events at IPFS camp. They had a lot of great content about like what is the process of taking a tutorial that's meant for people to interact with on the website and teaching that live in a room. So the goal is to create some written material that would help people through that process that would be relevant both to people who are leading proto school chapters, um, but also to someone who wanted to, for example, they were attending an event about DWeb and wanted to just lead a workshop there. They're not running a chapter, but they have this one time opportunity to teach the content and just some tips that would help them like, what do I need in the room? How many instructors do I need for the number of attendees? How do I make this work? Um, so getting some written documentation on that. So there are a few issues there. You'll find a link in the meeting notes to that. If anybody wants to volunteer to help out with creating those materials, it would be great. And the hope is that um, we'll see how the timing plays out. But once we have that kind of package of all of these resources put together, we'll, we'll make sure we get some comms out about it, maybe write a blog post about a lot of these resources that are available to people, not just 
we'll probably post it on the IPFS blog. So not just for people who are doing proto school, but for people who are interested in sharing teaching IPFS in general, um, making them more aware of those resources that exist. Um, we also have a few, uh, we have interest from a few more spots. We have some folks in Korea and I think it's Lagos is the other one that's in that list. Um, folks who are eager to start sharing proto school content. So I'm working with them. Um, yeah. Anything else in there, Joe, that I'm forgetting? No, no, that's, that's it. Okay. Um, yeah. What else? What's, uh, what's going on in Tokyo? Anything new and exciting? Oh, yeah. Uh, not from Tokyo, but one of my <laughs> friends from Korea uh, made a chapter uh, request. Yeah. Chapter request, and you replied that you are working on some like a improving uh, a leadership model and he is um, eager to know more about what the current status of this yes and i am <laughs> i'm still i am still doing my research to make sure i don't make a move in the wrong direction but part of it relates yeah. to that the thing i just mentioned about making it easier for people to host events one-off um thinking about whether we should be shifting a little bit more towards an event specific model as opposed to a chapter, a chapter specific model. Um, and that might also make it easier. Like we have two, two requests in from Korea right now. So something that would allow mm -hmm. multiple folks or existing groups in a place to, to all be using mm -hmm. our content along with other content, which is the way I think things are actually playing out um, in practice. So I'm just going, I'm going through repos uh, and making sure that my assumptions are right about how people are actually using proto school content right now and how they're actually running groups. But I think that I will find that um, a shift would be helpful. So I will uh, be less cagey about that as soon as I've completed that review. But I will. I am. I am very aware of the request in the queue, and we'll be getting back to people as soon as I can. All right. Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, anything else people want to chat about today? All right. Yeah. Cool, it's good to see everyone. And we will um, we'll see everyone, should be the first week in January, I believe. But I'll update the issue for this call with the new date. Um, and I will share the link to the video and our meeting notes so people can review at their leisure if they weren't able to make it today. So I think that's it for us for this week. I hope everybody has a nice holiday season before we see you again. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.